Well, good morning, Calvary. I hope that you're having a great day wherever you're watching from, and I hope that you are ready for Christmas, that the festivities are ready, gifts are ready and wrapped, and you are ready for Christmas. I hope that as well you'll be joining us for one of our Christmas Eve services, either joining us in person and Parker and Lake Havasu at our McCulloch or Sweetwater campus, or joining us online uh, on our website, on YouTube, Facebook. Basically, we're watching this. You can watch uh, Christmas Eve uh, and join us there. And this week, what we're wanting to do is we're getting ready for Christmas. We want to pause and say, man, why did Jesus come? What was the reasons for his birth? Why do we celebrate besides the Son of God being born? What's the why behind that? And so today what we're going to be talking about is, is how Jesus was born to make payment for our sins. But before we get into that side of things, we need to back up a little bit and do some Old Testament review in this. Uh, and so we're not going to be going through every book of the Old Testament because that would take much longer than we have time in a word for the day format for. But I want to remind us of something in the Old Testament because when we look back at the nation of Israel, how they worshiped God and connected to him, there was a, a a regular ritual of sacrifices in the temple. So they would go into the temple and they had predetermined rhythms based on certain things. And there were things they would do on a weekly or, 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 or more frequent basis. There were things they did on an annual basis all to make payment for their sins. They would bring animals in and sacrifice them at the temple to make payments for the ways that they fall short of the, the standard and expectation that God had for them. And so for us, when we look at faith, when we look at God's word, we understand that all of us fall short of the glory of God, the book of Romans says. And, and so, as Romans also says, the penalty for sin is death. And, and this is foundational to the theology of Christianity, that each one of us is a sinner who has fallen short of God's standard of perfection in our life, and that there are consequences for that. And what we understand theologically is that the consequence of that is eternity in hell. That is our punishment that we have earned because of the rebellion that we have had against God's standards. And I say we because that includes me. It includes every one of you that's watching this. And the, the years that I've been in ministry, this is one of the foundational things that causes tension with people who are, are nominal in their faith of Jesus or maybe don't believe at all. And I heard this analogy recently from a pastor, and I want to repeat it for you because I think it might help you understand the, the idea that there is that level of consequence for our sins because I hear it all the time. Well, man, that sounds like God's really angry and vengeful. Man, I, I just don't, I think that consequence is too great. And the way we understand this is by understanding who we have offended in our sins. I heard this analogy that if you're a parent, and let's say uh, if you are a parent currently, this is a relevant one. If it's been a while, just think back. And, and let's say it's evening time, you're getting ready for dinner. And let's say one of your children is being a little extra difficult that day. And they're being a little extra complainy or they're a little whiny about the food they're being served or whatever it might be. They're being rude in general. There's going to be some conversation and consequence there but it's probably gonna be pretty minimal and redirected. Well, let's say I've got a, I got a son and a daughter, so I'm gonna use them as an example. And let's say that my son is the one who's being a little extra complaining, but let's say there's the, the next level there where he starts to get very bitter and rude and harsh with his sister. Well, the consequences for him hurting the feelings of his sister, my daughter, are gonna be a little bit more severe. If he becomes rude and offensive and, and very, harsh with her, the level of his consequences escalates. But let's say, for instance, that he turns that anger and aggression towards my wife and starts attacking her and being harsh and rude and bitter with her, the consequence gets even more strict. And see, when we think about that, we understand that the person we offend matters in the escalation in the same way that the type of offense we have affects the consequences. So I've heard it over and over and over again in my time in pastoral ministry. Oh, well, I just don't understand why this sin that I've done over here is such a big deal that I deserve hell. And I think we have to redirect back to the fact that all of our sin, whether it's severe and, and gnarly sin or minimal sin in our eyes, is still sin against the holy, perfect, just God of the universe. And we understand the difference in offending 
just a, a daughter versus a wife in a household for my you know, son hypothetically being offensive. But then you escalate that to the God of the universe. You understand that our sin is against the holy and just God of the universe. And so we have offended the greatest entity that could be offended in our sin. So our consequence is hell. Now enter back into the Old Testament where I started with this, that they used a system of sacrifices, animal sacrifices. They would kill animals and sacrifice them as a temple in a way to recognize that their sin demanded a death penalty. But there's limits to that. We can understand that, that, that there's limits to that, even in effect that they had to do this on a regular repeating basis. And theologically, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4 says, it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. This was a temporary measure for God to make a provision for us as his children to reconcile our sins. So what happened? Well, God made a plan that involved his son, Jesus. So Hebrews 10 continues, it says, for it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, When Jesus came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you've not desired, but a body you have prepared for me, and burnt offerings and sin sacrifices you take no pleasure. But behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. It continues in verse 10, it says, and by that will, we've been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So we can celebrate at Christmas because Jesus came to make the payment for our sins. He died on a cross. Scripture says that that God made him who knew no sin, that is Jesus, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus stepped in to be that sacrifice, to die on our behalf so that there could be a once and for all payment for our sins because his death on the cross. And that right there, is a great reason to celebrate this Christmas. Not just because he came to live and to, to, to model perfection and grace and humility for us, but also to make the greatest sacrifice for all of us, the greatest gift all of us could ever ask for, a gift that forever changes our life because he was a sacrifice we all needed. So I hope that you have a great week reflecting on the goodness and grace of Jesus. And I hope that gives you reason to celebrate this Christmas. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.